The 2017 Mojo Arts Festival begins tonight here in downtown Charleston. In this edition of Quentin's Post-Ups, I sit down with Scott Watson of the City of Charleston Office of Cultural Affairs. And be sure to download the free Quentin's Post-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. Well, Scott, it is so good to see you again. It's great to be with you, Quentin. Thank you. I got to start off really where we left off on Twitter. I was over at the Black Ink um, African American Book Festival Saturday, in which we had a keynote speaker, uh, obviously Kwame Alexander, and you retweeted that he's actually coming back here from Mojo. That's correct. Uh, Kwame's our literary corner artist this year, so we've had a long standing commitment to bring him down on Tuesday, October the 3rd, and he'll be both doing a workshop in, out in the schools and then coming to City Gallery at 7 30 for a free to the public program where I'll be talking about not just the words he's written in the, in the books he's published, but his perspectives on literature for African Americans. The Mojo Arts Festival, it's been stable here in Charleston for many, many, many years. When I look at this program guide, what does Mojo represent to you? Well, I think Mojo is this annual opportunity for everyone to come together. And the beautiful part about that in Charleston is, while the art may celebrate the African American experience in Caribbean culture, the audience really draws across the racial spectrum. And we'll see wonderful programs ranging from art forms to theater concepts, doing their annual theater event at the Dock Street Theater, to Rain Day tomorrow night at Brittle Bank Park, um, on through to our finale at Hampton Park on Sunday the 8th, where really Charleston comes alive, just as it does during other festival events. But I really think there is something special about Mojo. It kind of has that, that secret sauce to it where um, people that may not see each other regularly throughout the year right. make time to get together during Mojo, and that really is a, a wonderful thing. It's also a great opportunity to celebrate the contribution both of our elders and of the younger generation. So we'll have a program that brings together events you know, where somebody might be making their debut, mm -hmm. but we'll also have programming, whether it's a Swahili workshop with Johari Anduka that's one of our founding members of the planning committee, um, or something like reggae with Jose Chandler. Uh, it's really an opportunity for people to reconnect with something that they may even remember from their child. You talk about Jose Chandler. From what I understand from Pulse of Poria, this will be the last time you'll be organizing this event. When you think of Jose Chandler, what sticks out to you, Scott? Wisdom and love. Um, he is on a different uh, kind of pace that many of us make decisions and the consideration and kindness that goes into Osei's process is always something that's highly enviable. Um, and obviously he just is effusive with energy and compassion and uh, positive thought. So um, while we're allowing Osei to retire from the planning committee, um, certainly his spirit will infuse the reggae block dance as we move forward and he's made some good sage suggestions as to who we might want to bring into the fold. But we're also always looking for new energy. And that's one of the things I say would tell you is you know, whether it's calling my office or whether it's getting involved in the planning committee, Mojo is open to everybody. All it takes is you wanting to get involved. Yes indeed. Speaking of energy, let me take you to the Charleston scene headline for the post support. It says this Mojo Arts Festival. This year lineup sizzles with local talent. Tell me why local, why now? Well, you know, it's, it's funny because here today um, we have the Good Business Summit that Low Country Local First right. is doing. I read that headline and that reads to me like a slow news day, you know. Charleston is always sizzling with local talent. And I think part of the distinction they were trying to make is that um, while we'll have Ballet Hispanico here at the Gilead later in the month, and while we'll have mainstream high profile events, whether it's Kirby Hancock or Paul and Oates happening away from the festival. What we're trying to do with Mojo is really celebrate Charleston's arts contribution. So we've made some big commitments. We'll have Charlton Singleton and Nate Nelson here on the Gil at the Gill Yard on Friday, October 6th, right. doing a very ambitious program of Duke Ellington's music, um, which is from programs called the Sacred Concerts. And we think that we can't can't find a better hall than the Gill Yard to host that. Right, right, right. And while the music may be sacred in its inspiration, the musicians that are up on that stage, it has definitely been a swing. And with all of the voices that Low Country Voices is bringing together, it's going to rock. Um, but equally, we're just as excited about a poetry reading at the City Gallery or uh, 
a project called Sugar in the Grits right. that the NID Reed Peterbilt is doing at Circular Congregation yes. on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine. And when you look into this program, guys, Scott, what is that one particular program that you used to look at? This year, I think it's not one program, but it's the power of words. Uh, we have the good fortune as Marcus Amaker launches tomorrow the Free Verse Poetry right. Festival here at the Gill Yard. We've interwoven our program, so we'll have our Mojo, Mojo Poetry Series overlay Free Verse. Mm. We'll co-host his Poets Laureate event on Friday the 6th down at City Gallery. We also have ongoing now, it started on Monday, our NEA Big Read of Citizen and American Lyric by Claudia Rankine, a contemporary poetry volume. Um, you'll be personally interested because David Hammonds has done the cover artwork, and of course, you're incorporating David Hammonds' piece up on uh, America Street. But we really like the idea that we can have something like a keynote panel on October 2nd with Benny Starr, Manny Houston, Joy Vandermore Cobb, and the visiting choreographer Ronald K. Brown, uh, moderated by Patricia Williams and Sane from the Avery, right. and have that touch both on the big read, on poetry, and on mojo. And you know, my hope is, in addition to all the work we're doing in schools and out in the community with writers' workshops and yes. visits by people like Kwame or poetry in schools events, we really want that to be something that people move on from and incorporate into their lives. And if, if we can see Moja as a chance for lifelong learning, you know, plant that seed early when they're a kid in the school, but refresh it out here in Square during Heritage Day. Mm -hmm. And then give them a, yet another opportunity with you know, senior outreach and events like that. As we sing it right now, what is the future of Moja in your mind? Future of Moja to me is really, um, right now in the weather forecast, uh, for the first time in the past couple of years, we're not looking at uh, tropical depressions and cyclonic force winds off the shore, thousand-year flood. So, as we look at kicking off the parade in a few hours today, and then going out to reggae, right. I'm confident we're going to get off to a great start. And I'd just like to see 11 days where not just the local talent sizzles, but this community sizzles, and the arts are really resonant, and um, the rhythms and colors and spirit of Africa are, are resounding through Charles. Uh, I think that a successful 11 days will help us point path to what's next for our um, Certainly, we'd like to keep the festival as accessible as possible. That's both in terms of ticket prices, and you'll find that even more of the events are free to the public than ever, um, but it's also where we have events. So on Friday, the 6th of October, we'll be out at Magnolia Community Garden in West Ashley with a knockout performance by Daniel D. If you've seen him, oh, yes. that's the Daniel D, contemporary violinist, you'll know that that's a program that will just capture people's imagination and refresh their love for music. Um, so that's just a, another great opportunity. Rather than having them out on a harbor cruise or you know, in a nightclub, putting it right out in the public realm, I think, is, is part of what we want Moja to be. And most of all, what we want is people to come forward during Moja, go out a survey, contact our office, talk to a planning committee member, share what your vision for the festival this is Charleston's festival. This is our chance each autumn, you know, to kind of take what that traditional harvest period and have a cultural harvest and, and celebrate the fruits of, of everybody's collective labor. Um, I'm also hopeful that we get more innovative and interesting ideas for programs that people haven't tried. Before. You know, let, let's do more work like what Vanity's doing, where she's taking a formative idea for a performance and giving it, you know, a debut, but more in the context of a workshop work in progress right. rather than a finished play with sets, costumes, and set in a theater. Um, the more that we can have opportunities for discovery and for sharing a broader experience, the more relevant the festival will be. Scott Watson, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you, Gwen. Anytime.